All right, all right, all right. Welcome to another edition of Shabbat Lounge. This is Matt and, and Jake here. And we want to remind you of a couple of things. First off, we want to say thank you for stopping thank by. You for stopping by. And right? uh, tuning in and giving us your valuable time. And I wanted to show you we have something new. It's actually something old, something borrowed. Um, you know, <laughs> so it is uh, Instagram, and I'm in the process of taking an Instagram that I had as following Yeshua. I'm going to eventually name it um, Sabbath Lounge, but um, but I'm going to take over my old account for Sabbath Lounge. And we have some things there in Instagram, and I have some old pictures in there as well. Ooh, that's fancy. So, <laughs> yes. And uh, this is the day mm -hmm. that I, um, I decided it was a good idea to... Uh, chainsaw a burning log and i think i hauled it and almost caught a vehicle on fire so yes good day good day okay so more on that later that's another day that's a separate day. so um but we also have a website with lots of information at your fingertips we've been doing these tour portions and that's where we are today and if you click here uh you will find these tour portions are just a click away um so the weekly tour portions all go here and uh, you can act, you can actually have access to seeing these sh slides if that's a benefit to you. We encourage you to share them, to use them, to steal any content you find there. Um, this is really in not... a Torah approved manner. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. So, but anyway, we we're going to talk to you today about a Nora, another Torah portion. And so, Jake, what are we doing? Uh, I don't know. We're starting in the middle somehow. Oh, okay. So <laughs> maybe we should start at the beginning. Hey, that's how it works. So this is Vayashev, which means... Andy Dwelt. And not Andy. <laughs> I was going to ask, who's Andy? Andy? Dwelt. <laughs> so you have been asked who Andy was? Who's Andy? Who is Andy? So well, you go to Genesis 37 to 40... Verse 23 to find out who Andy was. Yes, who Andy was. All right, so and you see this famous painting uh, portrait um, of this. You know, as a kid, I didn't understand. I thought, wow, those guys are really there. And then later in life, I was like, oh, wait a minute. They posed these actors later and paid these people money. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I lived a sheltered life. Maybe not. So we, we see this comparison pretty early between Joseph and Yeshua, and that's kind of the main thrust of what we're going to talk about. And so, so uh, what is this Torah portion about? Like generally, generally about, um, I would say it's, uh, the beginning of the life of Joseph and Joseph occupies a big section of Torah. In fact, one of the biggest sections of Torah is about Joseph and, and, um, this is the beginning of his life, you know, kind of story. Yeah. So, okay. I just want to, I yeah, just to catch that. First. So, so Jake, how is Joseph and how are they, Joseph and Yeshua alike? Well, as you can see here, they're both beloved, the beloved son of their father. Um, uh, the father's are, the father is delighted in him, right? And Yash, uh, Yahweh says, says my son in whom I'm well pleased. Um, and they're the apple of their father's eye, right? Yeah, exactly. So, or the almond of oh, their father's eye. Oh, very good. Yeah. And so we found a lot of different comparisons. And uh, one of them is um, they both foretell, foretell that one day they're going to rule. And so in Genesis 37, 7, you've got this dream. And then in Matthew 26, 64, um, it talks about you shall see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power coming into the clouds of heaven. So you've got this similarity and what's the next one right so then the next one is being accused of being a dreamer those dreamers with their heads in the clouds right so uh joseph right uh is telling them about his dream and uh their brother the brothers are like and they said to one another behold this dreamer comes so he's like been accused of just being a dreamer and mm -hmm. then uh in mark 321b uh they said he is beside himself and this is uh he is uh yeshua has said something to them and now they're 
they were like, "What's this guy is crazy. He doesn't. He's his head's in the clouds." So that one may not be exactly the same, but may, maybe you know it's close, but it's not maybe the exact same term. Yeah. And one thing that uh, I wanted to point out here, just because uh, it's with the talking about the sheaves and the dreams and stuff like that and the visions, is a lot of times I see. So what's What's the common understanding of Acts 10 and Peter's vision? That all foods are clean. Right. Because uh, the vision is that there's a sheet held by the four corners with all the animals in it. And uh, Yahweh says, take and eat. Peter says, not so. We all know the story of Peter's vision. You can go read it. Um, but that's always taken to mean, oh, see, they have all these unclean animals. And so he says, go and eat. We know how it turns out. The The vision is explained later, not dealing with animals at all. Um, but why don't we use that same... Do we use that same understanding? Oh, the vision was about clean and unclean animals because there were clean and unclean animals in the vision. Do we use that same logic when we look at Joseph's dreams or the dreams of the Pharaoh that he interprets? So if we did, would we be saying that the dream is really about how the wheat bows down or to the, the corn yeah, bows down to the other sheep, or the cows right. eat the other cows. That's right. the point of the story. Right. Is that how, is that what you're thinking? Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. we don't do that in these other visions. We only do it with Peter's vision because it helps us, uh, you know, push a narrative. Yeah. So yeah, no, that's interesting. We kind of flip it. Yeah. No. Yeah. Anyway, that's kind of an aside from, the actual point of this no but it's good it's a good time for sure okay good all right and so next we see uh they're sent by their father to seek the brother's welfare so um the father isaac um said not isaac sorry jacob Jacob or slash Israel says, go see whether it will be well with thy brethren. And so you'll go check out the brothers, see what they're doing, see what they're up to. And, uh, and then Luke 20, 13, I'll send my beloved son. So, right. And he's sending them to check on his children, the status. Right? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> uh, they both went willingly and sought till he found them. So they were seeking until, they found what they were seeking, right? Mm -hmm. So, and Joseph went after his brothers and he found them. Uh, and then as far as Yeshua, lo, I come to do thy will, O Elohim. He came unto his own. So he came to, uh, uh, so the first part is Hebrews 10 verse 9b. And then the second part where he has come unto his own, meaning his brethren is in John 1 verse 11. And then they are both rejected and condemned to die. So in Genesis 37, 18, so you'll see a theme here. There's a lot of Genesis 37 here. Mm -hmm. uh, they conspire against him to slay him. And, uh, and then over in Luke and um, 19, 14 and 23, 21, we will not have this man to reign over us. But they cried saying, crucify him, crucify him. Right. The rejection and condemnation. Um then he, they were both stripped of their clothes. Uh, they stripped Joseph out of his coat, his special fancy coat that was on him in Genesis 37, 23. And uh, talks about how they stripped him, being Yeshua, uh, before he went up on the cross on the Staros in Matthew 27, 28. And we also want to challenge you to research the coat of many colors. It may not have been the coat of many colors, as Dolly Parton once sang. Yeah. Um, if you know that song, it's a yeah, it's a strange translation to call it. But in the Hebrew, it doesn't colors. really say that. And so Latin and English came along and translated it a little bit different. But in the Hebrew, it doesn't really say that right. necessarily. So. But it definitely stuck, and if you ask people about this, that's what they remember, and that's what they know, mm -hmm. because it makes a good flannel graph story. We've got the little Joseph, and like, Bling! and a musical. Yes, it makes a good musical. musical. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they're so uh, thrown into a pit, alone and forsaken, and they took him and cast him into a pit in Genesis thirty-seven twenty-four, and then in Matthew twelve, we do know that Yeshua was in the grave for three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Right. So. 
Um, so you've got a lot of interesting comparisons between the two. And then your turn. Yep. So um, both were sold for silver into the hands of the Gentiles. So they sold Joseph to the Ishmaelites, 20 pieces of silver, and they brought Joseph into Egypt from Genesis 37, 28, uh, which is greater than Genesis 37, 28b. Oops. I don't know. Not really understanding that. No. So Genesis 37, 28 talks about that. Uh, and then, of course, Judas... Right, they bargained with Judas for the thirty pieces of silver in Matthew twenty-six, and Judas has another connection, like Judah, Jew, the Jews, duh. yeah, mm -hmm. and raised from a pit, and they drew and lifted Joseph up out of the pit in thirty-seven twenty-eight, and also in Psalms mentioned Psalms forty talks about lift, being lifted out of the pit, out of the mud and mire, mm -hmm. and then in I don't know that because of you too, by the way. Um, for all the U2 fans That's, out there, which I'm sure that you're tuning into this because you're a U2 fan. Right. No. See, I thought um, you were saying YouTube. I was like, well, YouTube. of course, we've all learned everything that we know yeah. from YouTube. Yeah. Our That's right. Lord. No. <laughs> and so, and then 1 Corinthians 15, 4, he rose again on the third day according to the scriptures. So um, this idea of rising from the pit and nothing like the Batman character that crawls out of the pit. Nothing like that. So yeah. what was that? Batman something? I don't know. Uh, so Dark Knight Rises. Yeah. I don't know where he was rising to, but it took him three hours to do it. <laughs> All right. Little, uh, uh, little uh, shout out to Pittsburgh Dad. So uh, became a servant. So Joseph was brought down to Egypt, and he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. Right. So, and he, we know that he served uh, the uh, Potiphar, and he served the Pharaoh, and was the right hand man, and everything. Did and he play him. tennis? Yes. Okay. In All Genesis right. thirty nine one through two is the tennis chapter. Yes. Uh, and, and then in as far, as far as Yeshua, I am among you as he that serves, right? And Luke twenty two twenty seven, and I took upon him the form of a servant. And that's uh, Philemon 2, 7. So that's talking about the coming of Messiah when who he will be. He will be someone that acts as a servant. And also, he talks about being a servant at the Last Supper, as it's called, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. Washing of the feet and everything. Yeah. So. Everything he does and everything he did prospered. And the, the Lord made sure that all that he did prospered in his hand. Genesis 39, 3b. And then in Isaiah 53, 10, we see the pleasure of Yahweh shall prosper in his hand. So definitely everything um, both of them did, you know, was blessed. Yeah. No, the resisting of temptation... Uh, Obviously, the temptation in this Torah portion is with Potiphar's wife. She's coming on to him, and he's having she's none of it. She's a she-devil. And uh, so that's Genesis she's 39. I don't know <laughs> that I would go along with you on that. <laughs> but uh, I'm a little fuzzy on the actual definition of the word. <laughs> Genesis 39, 7 through 12 talks about that. So go read about what is this? This cougar, cougar that you're talking about? <laughs> when an older woman pursues a younger man because oh. he was probably younger than her. But at this point, I okay. don't know. I don't okay. know. They might have been the same age. Uh, and then uh, for Yeshua, for such a high priest was fitting who is holy, homeless, undefiled, separate from sinners. So he, uh, then it, that's in Hebrews 7. And when we look back at Hebrews 4, we see he was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. So he resisted that temptation of sin. And then we included in here also the temptation of Yeshua in the wilderness after his baptism, of course, mm -hmm. from Luke 4. Yeah, and that seems to really fit very mm -hmm. similar. They're both falsely accused. Um, in Genesis thirty nine seventeen, the Hebrew servant whom thou hast brought into us came in to mock me. And so, um, and then in Matthew 26, 60B and 61A, I can't see it, and I don't know why. It's that uh, 
crazy bar down there. Mm-hmm. Uh, bear a false witness and said, I'm not sure. We'll have, you know, I'm going to have to look that up. We don't know how to get rid of the little box. And we if, can do If this. we say X out of it, can we? Oh, no, you've done it. There. You meant Aha, escape. Right. What did I push? One? At last came two false witnesses. Oh, so. yeah. And then they falsely witnessed about Yeshua. There, we fixed that. Yeah, fixed it. We showed that who was boss. We're we're number one with yes. technology. Okay, numbered with the transgressors. Uh, Joseph's master put him into the prison, a place where the king's prisoners were bound. So in Genesis thirty nine, uh, and then Yeshua, of course, there they crucified him and the malefactors, one on the right hand and on one on the other. Uh, so he was <clears throat> numbered with the transgressors. He was put on the on the star house with the other people that were that had transgressed. Mm -hmm. Also, it says he was numbered with the transgressors when he's in the garden, mm -hmm. and it's before he's in the garden. It's when he tells them to go buy a sword, sell sell what you have, and go buy a sword. Mm -hmm. And then it says there he was numbered with the transgressors. Mm -hmm. So it even uses the phrasing numbered mm -hmm. with the transgressors. Mm -hmm. Uh, promised deliverance to a condemned man. So in Genesis 40, 13, we see, Yet within three days shall Pharaoh lift up thine head and restore thee. So, mm -hmm. and, then, uh, and then Luke 23, 43b, as he's on the cross, he says, Today you shall be with me in paradise. So, so and so, deliverance, not the backwoods not the of, banjos yeah Doing banjos i hear <laughs> paddle faster i hear banjos playing yeah so not, i've been there i've been on that kayak <laughs> i've actually been on that kayak in arkansas yeah and said the very phrase and had to paddle faster not because the banjos <laughs> were playing but because it was raining ah. so you always have to paddle faster in the rain yes that's right you don't want to get wet <laughs> in a kayak so, but we did uh, borrow some things here from Jews for Jesus from this website. And this came from a newsletter from 1985, and they had a pretty good comparison in there. So, yeah. Um, and so we're going to kind of go back over some because I know we, we hit some of those things a little quicker, but we wanted to dive a little bit deeper in here. And so we have the split screen of Joseph and Yeshua. And so, Jake, you talk about Joseph, and I'll talk about Yeshua. How about that? Okay, so we're going to cross the hands and give the blessing. But kinda. it's the same, yeah. Okay, Joseph, he was sent by his father to check on his children. And where Yeshua is sent by his father to gather to check on the lost sheep and it's almost um, like the lost sheep are the children of Israel. I know. It, it does, does seem to make a direct connection <laughs> to that. Well, yeah. Joseph was rejected in that. And just like Yeshua was also rejected um, by his counterparts, his brothers, if you will, did mm -hmm. not accept him. Yeah. And well, Joseph, he went away to prepare a place. How does Joseph go to prepare a place? Well, you see... He goes away to Egypt, and he prepares he a place for exactly. them to get away from their the provision. Famine. Yes, he prepares. Yeah, that's exactly right. So, and Yeshua goes to prepare a place for us. You thought you were tricking me. Yeah, I did. I knew what you were saying. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then um, he was sent by his father to check on the children, aka the tribes. And was rejected, and he went away to prepare a place. So I think we they could have gotten rid of that one. We just like to say it in place. several different ways, so yeah. you really get what we're saying. That's right. And then you do see this um, very strong comparison here between a kid goat that's slain to a tone. So yeah. what do you think about all that? Yeah. So the, in this Torah portion, they kill a goat and smear his blood on on uh, Joseph's special coat. And take it to show their father as as though Joseph is dead. No, yeah. no. Yeah. And then just like Messiah is, uh, he's the lamb that's slain, but he's also the uh, the scapegoat, mm. right? Mm -hmm. From the uh, from Levit from Leviticus. Right? Yeah, yeah. So. And you also have this betrayal for silver. So this both 
uh, this happens to both people here. You know, there's a money exchange and a betrayal. Yep. And so they're sold to Ishmaelites. And I put slash Edomites. I think when I researched this, you know, um, you know, in the, um, the account with Yeshua, it's the Edomite Herod. And so if you've never studied that, you should study his lineage. And uh, I believe if you really study it out, you'll come to the conclusion that Herod was an Edomite, uh, which is a descendant of Esau, and um, that he should have never been the high priest, and he had robbed it of the, it had robbed that position, and John the Baptist was probably the legitimate high priest, and so and that has still been robbed even to this day. Uh, I believe that that's you know unfortunately we still see many of the Edomite uh, lineage that claim to be Jews, but they probably are Edomites in reality. Mm-hmm. So, but um, but it is an interesting comparison of having been sold to the Gentiles, if you will. So, right. And I think and that pretty much end. sums up so uh, the talking Torah for Vayeshev, and he dwelt for Genesis thirty-seven through forty, verse twenty-three. And so, once again, you know, we hope to. Um, to pique your interest and maybe there's some things that we said here that you haven't heard before that you want to go back and research and find out more and dive deeper you know that's that's what we want to do and that's what we pray is that uh, that there are things here that make you go re-examine these stories and, and read your bible and go back and look at the torah look at the text study it know what it says and stop listening to all the men even if it's us um you know go back to the source so, yep. and we, once again, we thank you for stopping by and checking us out. Jake, any final thoughts, any last words? Nope. That's it. Tune in next time for uh, the continuation of Joseph's story. That's right. There'll be more. Thank yes. you. See you next time. Out.